So now that we're able to compose closed loop transfer functions and consolidate a block diagram into a more condensed uh, direct input output relationship, now we're ready to come back and take a look at our four fundamental control goals, stability, tracking, disturbance rejection, and robustness, now in the context of closed loop control and closed loop response. What we're really interested here is in contrasting what we saw in the open loop case and understanding how, if, and how um, closed loop or feedback control is able to help us achieve these control goals. Stability is the first property that we'll take a look at. And remember, stability is whether or not um, can be quantified by in terms of whether or not the poles of the transfer function are in the left half plane. So if the real part of those poles uh, are negative, then uh, the system is stable. And so what we've done before is we've looked at just the um, transfer function that represents the system dynamics, so the, so the plant or the, or the process model. Um, so because this corresponds now to the open loop dynamics, we're going to call this the open loop plant. And the, if we call um, the numerator and denominator as polynomials B of S and A of S, then the open loop poles, we'll call these the open loop poles, is where A of S is equal to zero. So it's the values of S that make A of S equal to zero. Now what we're going to be interested in is quantifying the poles of the closed loop transfer function. And so if we don't say anything, then this is the closed loop transfer function because it relates the reference to the output. But we can also have closed loop transfer functions from the noise to the output or from the disturbance to the output. So we can say that. But again, if we just say the closed loop transfer function, we mean this particular transfer function. Notice, though, that if we're talking about stability, that the denominators of all of these different transfer functions, and that's including the output transfer functions and the um, tracking error transfer functions, these all have denominator 1 plus gk. So if we find the values of s that make 1 plus gk equal to 0, that actually tells us the poles of the closed loop transfer function uh, and, the, and all of the rest of the closed loop transfer functions. So if similarly we say that the controller is a transfer function with c, polynomial c in the numerator and d in the denominator, then the closed loop um, poles are the roots of 1 plus gk. So that's the denominator down here. And so if we just go ahead and substitute in what we decided to put in here, we get b of s over a of s multiplied c of s over d of s, which gives us this expression. And if we go ahead and multiply both sides by that denominator, we get this. And so and there's not a whole lot to be said because we haven't told you what any of these polynomials um, are. However, the key insight here is the fact that the poles are going to depend on all of these factors, A of S, D of S, B of S, C of S. So the poles can be manipulated, the closed loop poles can be, be manipulated by changing our controller. And so that's the that's the key insight here, and that's that tells us that there is hope to change the stability simply based on using this controller. So um, we're gonna we're gonna be able to analyze using the same tools that we used before, analyze the poles of the closed loop transfer function. Key there is that we need to be able to form that closed loop transfer function, and that's what we just learned in the previous part of this class. And then, just like in the open loop case. We're going to take a look at um, being able to quantify whether or not that system is stable. And so that's through those poles. And if it's more complicated, we'll go ahead and use the Routh criterion in order to figure out whether or not it's stable. And then we can even use it to design parameters for our controller to guarantee stability. So we'll take a look at a simple example. Again, just leveraging that same spring mass damper example. We already went from the ODE to the block diagram and the block diagram to the closed loop transfer function. So now we've already gotten there. Remember, this is the open loop transfer function. And then this is the closed loop transfer function. So now we're going to specify a particular controller. So our controller in this case is just going to be the constant KP, uh, motivated by the idea of proportional control, so our simplest version of control. 
And so if we go ahead and plug in that, this becomes KP and this becomes KP. And then we multiply top and bottom by that MS squared plus BS plus C. And that leads us to this closed loop transfer function with proportional control. So now that we have this relationship, what we're interested in understanding is whether the closed loop system is stable. So we already know that our necessary uh, conditions are the fact that all these coefficients need to be positive. So that means that M has to be positive, B has to be positive, and C plus KP has to be positive. If we wanted to, um, to check the uh, more strict conditions for stability, we would go ahead and compute the Routh table. In this case, we put our um, S squared term here, our constant term here, our linear term, and um, then this becomes zero. And so then this term down here is simply just um, this product minus this product divided by B. And the, so that gives you just C plus KP again. And so this first row, or sorry, first column indicates that all of these have to be positive. And so that gives us the same criterion as we had before. So what you'll see is, is simply because this is proportional control in a second order system, the Routh table and these necessary conditions always align. Um, but for more complicated examples, you could then use this to refine um, the values um, and constraints on our different parameters here. And so in this case, um, KP, so C plus KP has to be greater than zero. And so that tells us that KP has to be greater than minus C if we want this system to be stable. And so this gives us a way of picking KP. Uh, we still have a lot of flexibility, but at least we know that it needs to be greater than minus C. So minus this coefficient, which it was related to the spring uh, springiness, uh, stiffness. So we need to pick that greater than minus C if we want the closed loop system to be stable.